Okay then, so as a continuation from the previous video, let's specifically talk about the REST API call trigger. Now the REST API call trigger is one of the most common ways that you would invoke a build chip workflow from a calling application. Now that could be your own application, your own project that you are creating. It could be you have your no code builder will then would like to pass information into this particular workflow to carry out a number of tasks to then ultimately get a response back to the calling application. So that's what a REST API call can do for us. So let's add this trigger now to our workflow so we can then start looking at it a little bit more closer. Now you can see here this is the kind of the design canvas with inside uh, the uh, the build chip platform. You can see here the, the works that the actual kind of trigger this at the top there is the kind of the entry point into our actual workflow. Now, this particular trigger has a number of properties that can be set and uh, other triggers will also have a, a different set of properties that can actually be set here. So let's have a look at these then. So the path, of course, will be kind of the, the URL. This will be the extension to the URL that we would be calling. So if I press this little link option up here, you can see here we've got this endpoint URL. So that's what you would copy and paste into your kind of your calling application. But of course, when we add the path in here, we can just do here, just type in test here for example we'll go back up to here and you can see now that we've got test on the end so every single workflow if you had five of these for example with inside this particular project this build chip project then you need to make sure that every single one has a unique name at the end of it and of course it means that all of these will always remain the same but this name will represent the rest api call trigger node uh, kind of path um, individually. So they'll always be unique. So that's important, but of course we couldn't call this right now because we haven't pushed this particular trigger into production. We'll do that at a later stage, but for now um, this just gives you a clue to kind of what that URL will be called. Now, of course, the REST API can, uh, the, the actual call, the trigger here can support a number of different types of methods. So we kind of got a very simple get request from your calling application post where we can pass in some kind of some detail into this REST API call. And of course, we can then pull that information out and we can use that in other parts of the workflow. You kind of do that on the get request as well. But the post um, is a very, very common way in terms of passing a lot of more body information into the workflow where we can kind of then pull out that information. And if we're doing any kind of updates, we can support put as well, or we can kind of do deletes. But certainly get and post are certainly the most common methods that you would apply to a REST API call. Now we've got other kind of detail here within this particular trigger. And we've got some options available to us. So here on the three dots there, we can kind of edit, we can copy, we can paste, we can delete, and we can view logs. Again, uh, very, very self-explanatory there. We've also got this little information option up here, which kind of gives a little bit of information about this, what this trigger was was when we kind of created it. But the uh, the clever thing with inside build, uh, build chip is we can customize this however we would like. So if you would like to be very descriptive about the, the kind of the nodes or the triggers that you actually have with inside uh, build chip itself, you can press a little pen here and you can kind of now start editing these kind of details. So, so you're almost putting documentation with inside the actual workflows themselves. So I'll just come out of that. Let's just cancel that and go back. So that is a very, very brief look at a REST API call. And of course, we'll start building out the workflow and when we start, start talking about nodes to try and make this workflow do something just as a entry and a, a very kind of starter sort of uh, part to this particular journey on building uh, kind of workflows from inside BuildChip.